let's have some view from investor side you know so we have our eminent investors here and some some views from hr side you know so sharad is here and something from our auditors and pmo you know first obvious question matlab it's not written here but it was not given to me <laughs> so uh, to investors first very obvious how was your investment in au sir no i think that's a foregone uh, conclusion to be honest uh, it's so you are the youngest uh, investor Correct. in au family youngest you're, you're in reality but oldest in spirit you are answering the first okay <laughs> uh, no i mean i think it's been a terrific investment more than you know financial investment it's just been uh, great fun getting to be part of the larger au family to be honest uh, like i said i think i met uh, both of you first in 2011 uh, sanjay and uh, uttam in bombay and uh, there was a twinkle in both your eyes uh, you know it was very evident that au will become something really big and uh, obviously it's a proud moment today that uh, it's you know in the process of becoming a small finance bank uh, and hopefully it will you know set a benchmark not follow a benchmark I think that's the uh, thing we were discussing earlier. That uh, you know, it's a it's a unique model, and you will end up setting a benchmark for others to follow. So yeah, so we've uh, known Sanjay and Uttam from uh, 2011 as well. We invested uh, in 12. Uh, the financially, obviously, you guys would know the investment has been great. But more importantly, I think it has also been a great investment. It's you know, we you know, we have global firm and. Anywhere we go, and it's small actually in, in terms in, in the context of what we do. But anywhere we go, everybody asks about AU and about Sanjay and how that company is doing because it is a very defining business. And RBI has given the recognition by giving the small bank license as well, furthering financial inclusion, inclusion, and showing the way to others uh, on both how to distribute credit and hopefully now on the, on the liability side as well, showing the way to other entrepreneurs. I think there's after we made the investment, there's so many NBFC deals that have happened in the market in the last. Two years now. Every every investor I talk to is <laughs> wants to do an NBFC deal. I'm sure Sanjay, you meet people who want to start NBFCs as well. Uh, so it's truly been an, been an inspiration, and I think it's already left a mark on the country. But just hopefully, this is just the beginning still. Uh, I'll start with that. We've done 75 investments over the past decade and a half, and every time we do an investment, what we try to judge apart from the numbers is how much passion does the team have. and i must say that whenever we meet meet this team the the energy and the passion and the ambition just comes out so which is which is which is what gives a lot of comfort to any investor like us similarly uh, if we look at over the last 3 years since we've been investors the industry has gone through a very bad phase but still this company has performed probably uh, he, this is one of the best nbfc performances over the last 2 years so so it, 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 i i think it's all about the team all about the execution and as, as sanjay was mentioning earlier that these guys can execute they they just need the right platform best of luck guys thank you thank you ashish thank you shubhi thank you shyam moving forward uh, my first question to uh, investors only you know to teach shyam and ashish so taking a cue from our journey over the last few years you know so what are your expectations now from au as a small finance bank so if i look back at banking even after so many years of privatization of banking still 75% of the market share in india of banks is with psu banks now even if we take out sbi out of this pack which is probably to some extent progressive we still left with half the market which is with the sleepy banks with very low service standards given this backdrop i, I think it's not only au but all the new license holders are at a great have a great opportunity going forward but within this pack i think au probably is the best placed just given the diversified asset mix they have which provides in a customer mix which i which is at all income levels from low income levels to mid to high and which is very important which is missing in many of the microfinance players who got into banking this 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 customer base also provides a, a lot of opportunities to cross sell a whole gamut of products 
to, the, to, to a captive audience. So given this backdrop, at least, at least I strongly believe that AU will stand true to its name and become a gold standard in banking over time. Totally uh, agree with uh, what Ashish said. A trillion dollars of assets in the banking system, uh, bulk of them with the PSU banks. And the PSU banks are, you know, if you go to the bank branch, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, not the greatest of the experience for the customers. HDFC and ICIC have done a better job, but they are focused and they found their market in the urban affluent customers in the corridors of Bombay and Delhi, Sanjay was talking about. Now you have 21 new banks, but the payment banks, you, know, you guys would all know this, is a different model. Three of them have, have withdrawn applications already. Uh, the telcos would probably do well, maybe a couple of others. The small banks, as Ashish, Ashish said, is all microfinance uh, banks, except for AU. So I, I would you know, genuinely feel that AU is probably the best position now to be the next bellwether in the banking system in India. Who, who else, I mean, if you look around? And as the, the PSE banks retrench a little bit, they are having capital issues, NPA issues, aging management teams. There's white space that is being created, which, you know, in Sanjay's own figures, 50,000 crores, which is about $7 billion in, in, uh, in about five years. You project that for another five years, and if it grows at a modest pace of 20%, 25% for another, you know, in 20 years' time, this is $100 billion. It's, and for, for the technology partners, that's, that's the potential you're looking out at, at a potential partner. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll make one more point in addition to the numerical point in the scale and the heights that you can reach. You can also redefine, it's already doing it, given the focus on the customers, uh, how banking is done in India. I think it's still to be figured out. But you know, I haven't seen, I've met a lot of financial services institutions and people talk of compliance and operations and productivity. But this, the, the single-minded focus on customers and making sure you deliver the product and the service and the experience and the prior panelists talked about that. You know, the, the EU is probably again the best position to deliver that as well and show the, show the world the way. No, as investors, obviously, we have uh, vested interests, uh, you know, in having very high expectations from everyone here in AU as well as all of you. Uh, but I think that aside, uh, clearly, AU is a very unique culture, I think some of which you've experienced as you've understood the business. You know, it's an interesting word, and I got to sort of know about this word when we, you know, uh, had more and more interactions. It's, AU has this culture of zero transmission loss. You know, uh, which goes from top to bottom and bottom to top, which which is very unique in a business of this scale. Uh, most businesses become silos and you know structures after a certain scale, but it's remarkable that even at this scale, the pace at which decisions get made in AU, the responsiveness of AU, you know how Sanjay, Uttam, Rishi, people here, everyone knows what's happening on the ground. That's critical to succeed, you know, to the point uh, all of you were making earlier as well. Uh, and that's something which needs to be carried forward to the bank platform. That is a unique element of the AU DNA and, you know, that will define success going forward. Uh, besides that, I'd say, I mean, you know, AU has a clear opportunity to become the, the only pure play retail SME focused bank. There's no sort of such entity out there today. I mean, people have a mix of a wholesale and a retail book. AU has a very strong retail franchise, and it continues, you know, hopefully to capitalize on that strength and, and you know, uh, goes forward from there. The other thing which I think AU has done really well over the years is managing all the stakeholders. In some way, this is nothing but managing different stakeholders, whether it's lenders, in, you know, uh, continue to sort of keep the good work, and uh, there's no reason why what Ashish and, uh, you know, uh, Shitit said would be a reality in very short span of time. So my next question to Mulija to you. What benchmarks should AU aspire to achieve in its this transformation journey? I think you've asked a very interesting question. And, uh, you know, let me put out a challenge. And uh, this is basically for uh, all of us as a team. To, to see it differently. I think version 1.0 of banking is done. Uh, the reason why the RBI gave differentiated licenses is that the word is differentiation, which means banking we want something new, we want something agile, we want something different, we want it to connect back to customers. And I think, you know, there is an opportunity given to 20-odd banks. 
or aspiring banks. And I think that's, that's what the challenge is, you know, that has been laid out. So differentiated banking is not, I'm a small bank, you know, and I need to operate in the geographies. It's basically to say, I'm going to change the way banking is done. So it's the Uber of banking. Sanjay Ji, I give you a gift. Today's day is a very good day. If you look at the day, it adds up to nine. If you look at the month, it adds up to nine. If you look at the year, it also adds up to nine. Din bhi aapne baut achhi suni hai, right? So the day itself is very transformational, right? So I will say nine things today, which are transformational. Okay, I will not talk about APIs. I will not talk about Uber. I will not talk about anything which is different. But I'll talk about nine things which is very interesting about AU and about your bank. Okay. The first thing I want to say is your customers are going to be the youngest customers in the world. India will have the youngest age that is there. If you have a child in your house and a child in your house, you don't do the same with both of them. Right? You don't treat them in the same way. You treat them differently. So I think you have an opportunity here today to treat them differently. So that's one learning that I got, at least from my experience. The second thing is, the world is only 10 years old. The world is not a hundred years old. The world is not a million years old. Ab jitne bhi bole hai, Uber hai, Amazon hai, Snapdeal hai, vagera vagera. Sab dasal saal se niche. Everything has been created in the last ten years. So your vision for the bank should not be more than ten years. Har saal apka jo goalpost hai, agle dasal saal ka hoga. Ya agle nao saal ka hoga. But ab usse jada mat sochiye. Usse kam mein hi kaam ho jaye. That's the second one. The third one is, aaj kal fast food ka zamana hai. Because people have become young, usko fata fat kaam chahi. Nobody wants things which are age old. People do not want to wear old things. People want to wear new things. And therefore, you have to deal with that with your customer set exactly in the same way. You have to understand जो आप कल लास्ट ईयर का सैमसंग की प्रोडक्ट नहीं खरीदना चाहते हैं, लास्ट ईयर के एप्पल की प्रोडक्ट नहीं खरीदना चाहते हैं, आप इस साल की प्रोडक्ट खरीदना चाहते हैं, सो योर प्रोडक्ट्स आल्सो हैव टू कीप अप विथ टाइम्स। द फोर्थ थिंग आई वांट टू से इज बैंक्स डू नॉट हैव कस्टमर्स टुडे, राइट? हम लोग बोलते हैं बैंक के पास कस्टमर्स हैं, नहीं है सर। बैंक के पास पर्सनल लोन कस्टमर है, ऑटो लोन कस्टमर है, कासा है TD, FD, whatever you say. Customers are not. Because there is no one person who will say that this is my customer. Everyone will say that this is my customer. But when he has a problem, he will say that this department will handle it, that department will handle it. Customer is not for anyone. Now this is a point to worry. So which means banks are not rendering proper service. Right? So if you say who owns the customer in your bank, nobody owns the customer. What you need is a chief customer officer in the bank who owns the customer journey of the bank, who owns the customer experience of the bank. Right? This is a very interesting way to look at. <laughs> okay. The other thing which is very interesting is, abhi logon ke paas bhout time hai. All their time is spent on Facebook and mobile. To bank bhout kam log jate hai. Right? And that is why, you know, you have all these channels, you have all these digitizations that is there. And I think, you know, that is one thing you have to keep cognizance of. Agar aap mobile mein SMS bhej denge, shayad aapka BV jaldi se maan jayega. Right? And this is one very interesting way of looking at it. And that's a huge transformation that's happening in the world. Right? The sixth thing is, there is no bank in the world which has only happy customers. The question is, do you have more happier customers? than unhappy customers. And how do you achieve that as a goalpost? What are the goalposts you need to achieve in order to do that? The seventh thing is very interesting. Complex is the new simple. Right? Abhi jitna dunia hai, itne sare forms aajate hain, itne sare mobile application aajate hain, 
इतने सारे कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी है बट लोगों को सिंपल सिंपल बात बताना बहुत मुश्किल पड़ता है आई थिंक दैट इज समथिंग यू नो विच वी हैव टू मेक लाइफ मच ईजियर फॉर आर कस्टमर्स and that i think you know is a very interesting way of redefining our version to not say the eighth one is most people most customers don't want to go to the bank bank nahi jana chahte so what do you do to get them to the bank that's the thinking process the answer to that is my number 9 which is sunday is always better than monday and many people don't understand that people can have a lot of time on sundays people don't have time on monday in on sunday they will access a 100 mbps connection ghar mein baithe hue chai peete hue pajamas mein they will see the television but on monday they are wearing a tie a boring tie a boring shirt a boring suit and they'll be running they don't have the time so why don't you give banking to them on the day when it matters to them the best and why don't you make it a sunday for them than a monday so these are my nine pieces of advice based on whatever i have learned in my life you know on transformation so sharad ji next question to you sir how do you think that uh, au is a differentiated organization team management So I think we've heard uh, from I think various folks who've partnered with AU and Sanjay Ji, and I think uh, I'll probably answer this in in two different parts: one from a customer perspective, and one from a from a people perspective. And from a from a personal standpoint, you know, Sanjay Ji always jokes with me that you know, हम आपको बस जयपुर में ही बिठा लेंगे. And a lot of my other folks ask me that you know, how come you're spending so much time? Uh, in Jaipur, all the time uh, working on this particular, uh, we don't we don't call it a project anymore. It's a journey, and it'll, it'll remain that way. I think the fundamental answer, which goes back to, uh, is that in a lot of ways, um, what you talk about from a customer centricity standpoint, what you believe in, should be the way a customer uh, is dealt with. we have seen that come to life and on a very basic level and you know i'm uh, i'm a consultant but i think at heart i'm always an entrepreneur uh, i can see two factors which are incredibly powerful uh, which i think everybody feels whoever the partner or, or employee may be one is the fact that there is a very genuine intent on trying to solve the problem from a customer perspective with complete disregard to what a product or a process or a people constraint mean i have never in my life i have been consulting 14 in 14 years worked across three continents and with new age i have never in my life seen an organization and it's it's, it's 6000 people have that intent embedded so in, intently and and i'll give you you know two or three examples which we ran into uh, which speaks volumes one is you know there was an example is that you were sharing and we we kind of experience that uh, if there is a customer problem my intent is to understand how can that be solved and there are only two outcomes all right one outcome is i will solve it and i am doing it for the customer one time as long as of course it's compliant etc and it's being solved for that customer and b maybe i can solve that for all customers and therefore i will turn my product and process upside down the next day to make that happen i would tell you that most folks will actually hide behind a process the fact is a big ship very difficult to turn i think that's a phenomenal differentiator which we have seen in action i think a lot of folks have kind of alluded to that uh, the second example was on uh, on a particular process around getting nocs to customers and how in a period of you know Two and a half, three months. They turned that on their head to ensure that you could get an NOC um, in a in a time frame of a week uh, for a, for a customer which may or may not have a voice. By the way, these are not guys who can go on and tweet and, and create a brand. But these are guys on the ground to have this kind of passion and this genuine passion. Right? I think that differentiation, uh, you know, surprisingly, and we call this the you know DNA or the dharma, whatever you want to call it. 
has actually percolated all the way down. That's, I think, a very, very substantial differentiator, which I think is, is a, actually a major uh, uh, core competitive advantage because it's very difficult to emulate. Uh, you know, it's very easy to say and you can put process around it, but if people feel that, so everybody owns the customer, and I genuinely mean that. I think that also brings the risk around, uh, and I was mentioned, once you become a bank, uh, whose customer is it? Right now, they are, they're all asset customers in some ways they own it, right? Um, the, the other thing which I think uh, really struck me is, is as a leadership group, um, very down to earth, uh, extremely strong in execution, but uh, very, very sharp. So what is your expectation from AU towards liability side? So uh, I would say one of the key rationales for going into uh, the bank licensing was that we can create a stable retail liability franchise. So, so, so the, the ultimate task is to create that franchise. Now how long will it, that take? Nobody knows. But uh, just in terms of some data points given that we can't said that I am numerically focused. So in terms of uh, customer base, when we start the bank, we'll start with almost a couple of million customers who we have served in the past. Now, this, this is a captive base, which if we can probably uh, capture them in the first couple of years, it can give us, give us a good head start. Then coming on to the, to the new, new customers, if, if you look at our three largest geographies, which are basically Maharashtra, Mara, good, sorry, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, and Gujarat. These three states put together, even if we get a 1% incremental share of deposits, we can get, get 5,000 crores per annum of deposits. So, so, so the opportunity is humongous. It, it, it's just the execution and execution. And, and I don't have an iota of doubt that this team, which has been able to demonstrate superb execution on the asset side, will be able to replicate from the liability side as well. Uh, first of all, uh, and I'd like to uh, pull back a little, say on the asset side as well. And it's easy to build asset side, but if you want to build asset side well, you need patience. And I've seen that in this team. You know, after we invested, the CV went through a cycle, and, and this was the first team to pull back. I think you guys were looking at it. <laughs> you were wondering, you know, what's going on. I gave confidence that total confidence is the right thing. I think Maharashtra was another example where you know, Sanjay and them and the team was first to pull back. Uh, and they are impatient, but that doesn't mean they're irrational. I think they are very calibrated. And then once, and I think when, when the cycle turned back, I think you were best positioned to push the pedal again. And best performing asset quality in the CV across MBFCs. I think Ashish might know that better than he has more investments in CV. Uh, if you have the same mind frame on the liability side as well, I think you have the drive, the passion, the impatience, the eagerness to build, uh, build the liabilities, but you don't do anything that, that is irrational or doesn't make sense, and if there's a mistake made, you pull back and then start again. I think there's no reason why liabilities won't come to you. And I think the other reason why life, you know, the point has been made enough, that customer focus is, is I genuinely believe, lacking uh, in the banking, banking system because the traditional banks came from the mindset of operations and process and compliance. Sometimes, a lot of times, compliances and processes actually become a hindrance. In fact, technology becomes a hindrance in delivering that experience instead of becoming, becoming an enabler. So the, the date mover advantage or the right mindset uh, can, can help you get there. So I think it's similar to what Ashish and uh, Shitit said. Um, I think, uh, again, taking a leap out of Ashish's numerical book, uh, just refreshing memories. FI10, FI, FI our asset uh, you know, side, disbursements were 400 crores. And this year, our monthly disbursements uh, are uh, you know, 5,000 crores, uh, 500 crores, sorry. 500 crores. So I'm saying, in terms of just the leapfrog that's happened in the last six years, the 400 crores yearly disbursement to 500 crore monthly disbursement, it's a huge achievement. I think FI10, if anyone were to ask that question, would you be able to disburse 500 crores a month versus what you're disbursing in a year? I think most people would have said, you know, it, it's not possible. A uh, lot of skepticism. So I think that's just inherent human nature. There is skepticism. And I'm saying this as an investor because we're trained to be, uh, you know, skeptics. But there is, I think we all believe in AU's potential. It's always, like I said, set the benchmark, not follow the benchmark. So 
I think everyone will talk about the fact that it's hard to build liability. Yes, it is hard. But, you know, that's where I think our DNA comes into play. And we have probably set a benchmark which no other bank has been able to sort of, uh, set up so far. Uh, and I'm quite confident it will take time, but I'm pretty sure even the next five, six years, we'll end up setting up a liability franchise which will be, you know, far steeper, far better than what most other banks have been able to I'll just add actually a couple of points uh, because I think fundamentally one thing people tend to forget from the liability side of the bank is that there is a very strong and huge asset base and customer, right? And, you know, we were visiting rural branches um, as part of what we were doing and one thing we, we would hear from an asset customer, we talked to, you know, the Autovalas and other guys who own CVs and they said that, you know, we just nobody would look at us and the way we are treated uh, is amazing at AU and we are waiting for the bank to come and we would want to open an account. So, don't underestimate the the customer experience, uh, you know, appetite you've created in your asset size of the business, that's one. And that could be, you know, it's not unheard of that you will translate that into, into a liability fine. Second is, you would know that virality is around ease of use and what people and customers feel and that goes to word of mouth, right? And if you can, if what I see from the, the tech stack, if, if there's a digital uh, acceleration which you're building on top of that, all I need to tell five people and they can get on and open an account one hour, I think in a lot of ways the way you would look at liability should be disruptive as compared to, for example, what traditional banking would look at. Sure. Uh, this next question to you only. Uh, <clears throat> so, what are the HR challenges of transform transformation where one part of the company has NBFC culture? I think we have been deliberated or discussing a lot on this, and a new vertical for liabilities is being created as a bank. So, what challenges you see? If we should. So, so, I would say, and I, and I say this with uh, with deliberation that it's a V challenge because you know we take that as a part of being a close part of the AU team. I think. The first thing to understand is you almost in six months are creating half of your organization, right? Uh, that creates a phenomenal amount of challenge on the way you're running the operations and there's a very different side of the business. Uh, so the first thing is how do you ensure this consistency of that passion, that culture, the operating culture as we call it. And it's not about what AU is um, as an organization, which is important, but how you take decisions, how the only two outcomes if there's a customer problem is can I solve it for this customer or can I make it into a product? You know, those kind of attitudes uh, is, is fundamental. How do you own a customer? It doesn't matter where the customer sits. Uh, how do I look to change my processes uh, given the fact that I liability is slightly more uh, compliance oriented uh, to be able to kind of service that need? So the operating culture part and permeation is probably the first, you know, big challenge. Or, you know, mere hisab se wo hota hai liye because if you believe that and aap, you replicate that in, in the people you hire, uh, you will ensure that that's, that's kind of continued, right? Uh, the second would be how do you prevent siloization? So, you know, it's very easy to become a bank within a bank and then, and, and, and those elements are very fundamental to who owns the customer, how is the customer experience. If the client tells you that, ji, mein jis tarah loan milta tha, banking us tarah nahi hoti, you have lost the game before it become, become, you know, begins. And it's an easy, uh, question to table but a very difficult problem to solve for and it has all elements of product, technology, business as well as HR which you need to kind of bring together uh, to solve for. And the third is, uh, you know, people capability. Now, we all talk about it a lot of time, we consult in this space but I think fundamentally there's a great set of people uh, but you also need to be candid and appreciate what worked in the previous eight years. Now given that you're a finance bank may not work and therefore, at the same time, I don't throw the baby out of the bath, bath water saying, oh, now we're a bank, so all the guys who are massive business, you know, don't assume that, right? So you've got to be able to mix that uh, piece and say, how do I take the capability to the next level? And the challenge, which is for us, is the fact that it has to be very accelerated. Uh, you won't have the luxury of time. One, your investors won't let you, <laughs> and B, Sanjay, and you won't let the team do that. So I think, you know, if I focus on the top three, that would be, you know, I, that's what, what I would I would share. Uh, Muliji, coming back to you. Uh, what are the cultural transformation issues that AU should take care of for customers and for employees? I think, uh, very interestingly, you know, um, 
when you say AU, you have a core team member and a team set who've been with AU for many years now. You imbibe a certain culture, a certain value system, a certain way of working, a certain way of thinking. That depth you will lose when you get new people and they are not imbibed and inducted into the system. The same way, you know, when you do transformation, when you do transitions, you don't have to tell people everything, but you need to tell them enough to boost their confidence. And that you have to bring in whether it is an employee or whether it is a customer. So you say, I want to increase CASA, I want to increase, you know, my current account balances. So as a consultant, we'll come and tell you, you know, just publish some nice ATM cards and distribute them amongst customers. We use card, right? But the fact of the matter is, the fellow, the poor fellow doesn't know how to use it. Then he will carry one PIN number with him. The friend will actually come. This is actually out of an interview, you know, that we conducted, you know, with rural people. Right? It comes out to say, that they don't know answers to these questions. So the question is, how do you take customers along with you? How do you take people along with you in that journey? And that, that becomes you know, one of the biggest fundamental challenges that's there. And it, it's about imbibing that you know, within your top management, followed by the second level of management, followed by the lower section of society. It's quite funny, you know, I mean, that we are discussing this in a management forum, you know, and I leave you with this joke, you know, that I read in Tinkle Comics probably 20, 30 years back, you know, where Supandi was invited onto the stage and asked, do you know, uh, you know, can you please speak on a subject? So then he got up on the stage, he didn't want to speak, so he said, do you know what I'm going to talk about? Everybody said no, so he said, then there's no point in addressing a, a group of ignorant people. The second time he was pushed, then he asked the same question, people said, no, some of us know, some of us don't know, and you know, there was a divided crowd. Again, he said, the people who know should tell the people who don't know, right? And then he walked off. So here, in simplicity, you know, it's some things that we've learned all the way through our grooming, through reading comic books, or doing something else. And the question is, how do you apply that back, you know, in a reality, when we are put up to that challenge to create version 2.0? and create our differentiated bank. And that culture we have to imbibe and, you know, put it back. I want to ask you this. How does technology impact employees' behavior towards customer service delivery and does it impact on customer's delight and satisfaction? I think that's I think uh, very important. Very, very critical. And I think, you know, uh, the first thing to uh, to appreciate is that if you look at HR tech, it's not a solution or a tool or a platform or, or a way of addressing uh, a technology need. It's actually uh, anchoring it in what it helps the customer achieve, right? So if I were to look at HR technology and you're able to enable, let's say, two, three things. One, you're able to ensure that from a personal perspective, there's bandwidth which opens up for an employee to spend that time on the customer. Uh, you first made that immediate impact of saying instead of spending you know 30 percent of my bandwidth figuring out stuff which is critical to me uh, i'm not able to go in front of a customer or solve a customer problem uh, i think that's what a, a good tech platform which is which is uh, you know useful for a use context kind of can does um, the second is being um, if you are able to again ensure that from a from a time to training to execution if that total time frame can be collapsed um, and through the ease of training, the platforms of training, etc., cetera, um, we were discussing this that, you know, if whatever sales executive is struggling on one end or, or the person selling liabilities is struggling on one end, uh, and there's this idea that we can actually take, you know, 40 performers in that region, uh, videotape them, and the, literally the guy goes on, on his phone, checks out, like if I'm what I could do if I was struggling with the problem. You don't have to physically create these training programs. So again, disruptions which are very simplistic, but focus on trying to help people uh, uh, which are, so that they're able to solve the customer problem better or able to service the customer better uh, is, is a second fundamental shift, right? 
Third is analytics. Uh, and I think people underestimate uh, when they look at people analysts. I think uh, very rightly was mentioned when people talk about business analytics, it's about um, business and not about customer experience. Similarly, I think people miss, even when they look at people analytics, it's numbers, but not about the people experience. So how do you use that, uh, again, to build competitive advantage? And I will, you know, having worked in India for a long time and, and seeing how the U.S. market markets work, especially in insurance, which is very digital in some markets, um, you would be surprised how few times uh, people and analytics and, and business and customer experience analytics are merged together uh, to be able to say, okay, this is what we want to be able to do uh, to, to help uh, the, the customer first. And I always believe if you are able to do three or four of these things right in terms of the ROE, in terms of the, the growth you are looking at, the asset book will automatically happen. Sanjay keeps echoing the same thing there, but you do it, leave it automatically the automatically financial numbers will Execution do it and calm it. And one of his favorite words is about transmission loss, right? So I think if, if you are able to have easy access to data, uh, then you can catch a transmission loss much, much quicker. We have a last question. What message would you want to give to our technology partners present here at this critical juncture of transformation based on your relationship with you? So I think I'll say three things. Um, first, I think the word partnership is very important. Um, you know, it's not an advisor, not a consultant. Partnership is a two-way thing. I think you alluded to that earlier, you know, exhorting everyone to over-invest in you like the way Accenture is. And uh, I think uh, we'd obviously uh, strongly second that, encourage that. I think that's something which, which is critical. Treat this as a partnership, which will allow, I think, all of us here to really be a part of a journey, which is quite unique. I don't think there's any other, uh, you know, NBFC which is as uniquely positioned as AU is to truly build a unique uh, and differentiated small finance bank. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing I'd say is, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, looking at technology as an enabler for business as opposed to you know being holding the business captive because sometimes uh, uh, technology can come in the way of doing business so i think the business goals have to be set and technology has to help achieve those goals as opposed to the other way around um, and third thing i'd say is you know that's in au's dna uh, work hard play hard i remember when we invested we had a small celebration uh, here in jaipur uh, and Uttam, you know, was, uh, you know, literally uh, on the dance floor uh, till midnight. And then next day morning, I, and we were going back, I saw him at 6, 7 in the morning, along with Manoj, you know, going to Punjab for a review. So that's just the culture of AU, execution, you know, work hard, play hard, and, you know, you'll have a lot of fun along the way, but just, you know, embody that sort of culture as well. So, uh, yeah, I'd add a few things. Uh, now, firstly, I'll say, you know, I think enough has been said on this as well. This, this team and this company is going places. Uh, it is going to be one of the large businesses in India and you know, maybe someday you know, outside India as well. Uh, and this is not just a professional investment at some level. For most of us that have been involved with AU, it's also a personal investment. This is the kind of story you, you know, many years from now look back and one of the projects or journeys uh, you talk to your grandkids about. So that's, you know, it's probably worth that investment. The second thing I'll say is, you know, the, the team is very humble. I mean, they, they, they treat the auto driver that's spending half an hour extra in the branch, branch with a lot of humility. You know, they, they really need you, they really respect you and everything you bring to the table and you will genuinely feel that. Now, but that does not mean they listen to everything you say. They'll also challenge you. <laughs> they'll uh, challenge conventional wisdoms, they'll challenge conventional ways of doing things. So be ready to debate. But they're very open, very, very open and flexible and transparent and if you're if you're the same it'll be a wonderful partnership and then uh, the other thing i'll say is you know some of you will be spending time in jaipur there's uh, flights are not great to come to jaipur there'll be enough time to spend time with the team i think build the personal relationship it'll only help the project the next six months are going to be quite critical building the foundation for that 10 billion dollar the 100 billion dollar bank that we all aspire able to become so i would uh, step back a little bit and uh, say that AU right now is very fortunate to start banking at this time because of two reasons. A, there is hectic disruption in, on the tech side which, which is enabling many of the players to deliver banking services at, at a fraction of the cost at which some of the existing players are offering. And B, we don't have that, <clears throat> that big legacy systems which are holding many other banks back from really exploiting those resources. 
so 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 the need of the r is not looking at conventional systems as shetesh was saying but to think really out of the box and see how we can deliver a, a really a cost effective solution to the customer which also enhances customer expect, customer's experience now these these are good good buzzwords but, but still in terms of really products if you if you look at it there are very few products in the world which which can tackle both the the cost side as well as the customer experience side like and uber is one of them and that's why they are highly successful so if you can work towards building that kind of service i, I, I think uh, then we are done and, and at the cost of uh, being sound repetitive i would say this team if they can get the right systems and processes they they can create his team banking So how do you find AU management team, sir? Is it difficult or uh, I want the honest answer on this floor, yeah, please. So, so I would say uh, we've been, uh, we'd had a love and hate relationship. I, I personally had many fights with Sanjay uh, over the, over the course of last three years. But the good thing is, from both our sides, we never never keep it on our heart. So at least we fight, and, and next day we patch up. So, so that's why it's truly a partnership from my end. No, I mean I'd say. Uh, for at least us it's been a love and love relationship uh, so far at least uh, and uh, i think uh, the management team uh, like shita was saying earlier is uh, very humble uh, at the same time they will not take anything for granted so they will question things which most people would accept without questioning which i think is important because when you are building something uh, it's important to question sort of fundamentals and not just take things at face value Uh, so at least in my experience that I've been investing for the last 10 years, uh, it's been one of the best teams, if not the best, uh, for sure. Uh, and uh, I, I, you know, I think it will continue to sort of deliver significant outperformance in the future. I think from uh, from my perspective, um, you know, the, one of the most important things is that the enthusiasm and passion. is very infectious i think that is something which i can always uh, take away and to the point that um it's it's never a easy conversation because you have a point of view and 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 you tell them this is how it is done so first first thing <laughs> sanjay said you what is our motto we challenge status quo so that logic is out of the window so you got to start from where, okay why will it work in our context and what we are trying to do so i think that's something we love as well because it you know it kind of i love to learn and every day i think we learn from not not in the management team but even the people in you and how things can be done sir you have a now you have a better practice going forward so he keeps saying that i'm helping you build your practice i think that is you know and and that i think may may well be true at least in the small finance bank segment you can bet that's happening so who's paying whom <laughs> that you know we are playing with yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, our relationship has been uh, great as well uh, i would say one thing i think the management team has the right intent so i think if you get into any discussion or dialogue with the right intent it usually ends up in the right place uh, you know we did the shareholder agreement we probably never looked at it again so for the tech partners don't look at the scope documents and <laughs> help the bank become a successful bank i'm sure for the major stuff you'll have to but that if you it's for the every minor thing uh, and just focus on solving the issue and i think have the right intent it will be a great relationship it's been a fantastic pleasure uh, you know uh, working uh, with the team um, i think uh, the team is uh, strengthening you know day by day you been bringing in new team members you're recognizing that uh, newer skills are required you know when you move from a lender to a partner you know with a customer and and uh, it it's uh, something which is uh, very infectious um i think uh, uh, your aspiration should not be to become the hdfc but to become something above that right and 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 i think um, uh, you have the capability the team has the capability uh, uh, the people uh, need to inspire get motivated when they come in you know and and deliver to the goods as they go in you know uh, into their uh, uh, into their next steps uh, what's very important is you know to recognize that we have a small window a 9 month 12 month window within which we become a bank and then there is a long window when we keep perfecting it and keep improving upon you know what we need to do 
And we need to recognize both these windows, you know, very actively. And we need to take decisions. And that, that's going to be, you know, the, the most important part. Quickly take the decisions, live with the decisions, and move on. And keep it simple. Right. And I think, I think, you know, I mean, the team is really, really good. And, and it will be a pleasure to kind of, you know, see uh, the next phase of journey with them. Thank you. So, uh, in the end, uh, thank you so much for getting us patient. So, big applause for the panelists. So, yeah. thank you so much. It's been a great audience. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.